What's up scavengers, Ask the Navy here. In this video, we will follow my Messer Barbaris colony on their move from one of my old homemade nests to this new Ants Australia setup. If you are interested in their work and want to know more about their items, go watch my previous video where I unbox a bunch. And if you perhaps have already watched that video, you should know that in that video I ran a giveaway. So stay tuned to the end to find out who won the starter kit. But now, let's get into the video. So here is my old, dirty and crowded setup. They have been waiting for this move for a long time, and the time has finally arrived. Well, as you can see from this footage, they are pretty active and really want to find a new nest to expand, as they do need a lot more space for their brood. You shouldn't really hold a colony this long in a setup, as it can make the population growth slow down. I kinda had to however, as the package from Ants Australia was a bit late, and I really wanted to move these guys into one of their nests. Talking about their nests, here it is, a white tongue nest of the older design, that you cannot buy anymore. This white tongue nest will be connected via the included vinyl tubing to an acrylic outworld, which you can buy. I have to show you a bit closer on the outworld. As you can see here, this outworld has a sliding lid, but even removed, it has a lip, which you can apply the barrier for the ants. The coolest feature in this outworld, however, is the entrance. The nest is connected with the tubing to a 3D printed part under the outworld which then leads up to a raised opening in the floor of the outworld. I have to say that this solution is super clever and I love it. Well, let's get going. I started decorating the outworld with some red sand that I had collected on my trip to Spain this summer. Awesome stuff. Then I added some dead twisted roots, also from Spain. And finally some seed husks for extra detail, from, you guessed it, Spain. I wanted to keep the decoration themed and only use things from the Mediterranean as that's actually where the Messer Barbarus is native, and also where this queen was actually captured, in Italy. So I wanted to decorate with appropriate things, to kind of please my queen, I guess. Only thing left is to hydrate the nest, and we are ready to go. Done. Okay, I had to think this through, as the whole setup was too large to fit in the outworld. First, I had to clear some space in the outworld, so I removed the roots. I started with bringing in the smaller test tubes that I had in the old setup into the new one. Then, it was time to disconnect the tube from the outworld. Here, I ran into some trouble, and of course my hand was in the way. But when I had disconnected the tube, there were workers biting the cotton from each side that I had placed in. So it was actually super tricky inserting a new piece to cover both of the holes. There were of course some escapees, but luckily messers are really easy to catch, as they are large, black and slow. So all disconnected, I was ready to put the test tube with the queen in, into the outworld. Next problem I ran into was that the old setup was too large to fit in the new outworld. So I had to cut away this vinyl tubing. This process was really hard, until I got this idea. Made it a lot easier. Well, that cleared up, I put the setup into the outworld with all the others. I tried to make it easier for them to climb down with the brood by putting a leaf as a ladder. Time went and not much was happening with them moving. They were just freaking out and was acting really defensive. No wonder, their home had literally been torn apart. I was really worried for the queen, but she seemed to be fine for now. As you can see, not much was happening with the brood chambers, as the ants were just as I said, running around freaking out. So then I decided to flip the nest on its side to try to make it easier for them to move. And well, they started moving, sure, but they seemed a little off of where they were moving and what they were moving. This worker here, for example, was carrying a newborn worker, who clearly could walk herself. I kinda took this as a sign that the ants were stressed, and I became a bit nervous. Well, time went on, as I waited patiently for them to find a new nest and move. But suddenly, I saw movement in the entrance, as well as in the connection tube. Yes, they had found it! Now, I just had to cross my fingers for the queen to move in. Well, I think they were really confused. Some ants were exploring the new nest, but most of them were actually moving brood from the test tube into the old nest. As you can see here, the brood chambers were not being emptied at all, but rather filled up. Ah, oh, this was going to be hard. And then, it just got worse. I saw her, a confused and scared queen, wandering outside of the test tube, but on the wrong nest. Ah, oh, come on, don't go in there. Your new and fresh nest is in the other direction. 
Suddenly, some of the workers started dragging on her node and legs. This was really gut-wrenching to watch, as I actually had a queen being decapitated by her own workers just like this, with her thorax and head being separated by her gaster. But I decided to leave them be and not to stress them out more. You could clearly see how the queen did not want to get dragged around, but the workers were in full defense mode and didn't really see that the queen might get hurt. But instead they were focused on getting her into shelter as fast as possible. This was honestly the worst 10 minutes of my ant keeping, as I didn't know if the queen's gaster would suddenly fall off or not. And then the worst part, they wanted her to go through this entrance. But since the worker had grabbed onto her node, aka the bit between the gasser and her thorax, she could not be dragged into the hole like that. Not just were the whole colony moving into the wrong nest, they were actually really close to killing their queen. This was so painful to watch, believe me. But a few minutes later, they finally got her in. And the relief when I saw that. Well, now she was safe at least, but she was in the complete wrong nest. Oh boy, this was going to be a hard move. After 4 hours, the nest was still empty, and the queen was still confused and was wandering around. I tried to encourage the exploring of the new nest by turning the old nest a bit to the side, as well as placing a cotton ball as a stair down, but that didn't really seem to help. The queen was still crawling around to different places, and then she found the old hydration chamber, which were dark and probably cozy, and there she actually stayed for the whole day and the next day. So, 3 days after the initial move, I saw it. They were moving brood! Yes, finally! I had done all I could to get them to move, but only after three days, they did it! So, the old nest was finally empty and was ready to be taken out. Damn, it was dirty. They really needed that upgrade. So, it was time to clean up in the outworld and get the last brood. So in the larger test tube, they had started to chew through the cotton, probably out of stress. And now, some of them were drowning. I shaked out most of them, but there were some left, and one of them was on the wrong side of the cotton. So first I collected the workers on the right side. And then I could focus rescuing this poor dude. Everyone counts, right? Well, that was it. I put back the large roots and brushed the sand a bit. But now, let's check the nest out. I'm really sorry for that strong reflection in these clips. I didn't notice it at all when I was recording. Well, here you can see, with persistence, anything goes. Even these guys. I decided to give them a bowl of goods, now that they had finally moved in. The Messer genus is primarily seed eaters, so that's what I gave them the most of, but also some freshly killed Dubia nymphs. It took some time for them to realize that the bowl was not there to kill them, but finally they got to it. I decided to put back the smaller test tubes into the outworld, as an extra source of water, if I forget to water the nest perhaps, just as an extra precaution. And well, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching these chaotic, dramatic and relieving moments in this Messer Barbarus move. But now, let's get to the giveaway. In my last video, I said this. So, it's giveaway time. And as I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to give away this awesome acrylic ant keeping starter kit to one of you guys. And well, I got a ton of answers. Much more than I expected. Thank you all for commenting. It was so fun reading about all your ants and what you were planning to keep. But because of natural selection, Mr. Rysks Amazon came out on top. He wrote this text as an answer, and no, he didn't win because of the length of the text. Congratulations for winning this Ants Australia Acrylic Nest Starter Kit. I hope your tetramoriums will like it. If you don't already, follow me on my Instagram. I recently visited the non-public entomology collection of the Swedish National Natural History and Science Museum, and whilst there, I was allowed to take some awesome stack photos of some of their specimens with their super amazing gear. Just look at these, amazing, right? Well. See you around, Skeps. Until next time, have a good one. Bye!